we can joke and laugh about the name GNU slash Linux going around posting the copy past and all of that fun stuff. But have you ever seriously sat down and thought about the name and thought about how little sense the name actually makes? And if you've seen this channel before, you know we're going to do exactly that. However, before we can do that, though, we need to know a bit of history and know the context around why the name exists. So from the perspective of the FSF, GNU, and Stallman, this is basically the idea. So GNU has its suite of software. It has the core utils. It has a C compiler, a C library, and a bunch of other software you need to basically make a functioning operating system, but it doesn't have a kernel. But then at some point, Linus and the Linux kernel came along, and this has the opposite problem. This is just a kernel with none of the software you need to have a functioning operating system. But at that time, back in the 90s, GNU was actually in the process of making their own kernel. This was called GNU Herd, and the project actually is still going right now. It's just being developed at a fairly slow pace. And the main reason it slowed down is because they realized that Linux did pretty much everything they needed it to do. It wasn't perfect, there were still some things they wanted Herd to do instead, but for the time, it did what they needed. And then the GNU software and the Linux kernel were brought together to basically create an operating system. And 30 years later, pretty much the exact same model is being followed. We have all of these different distributions, and the vast majority of them ship the Linux kernel alongside the GNU utils. For the record, Linus doesn't care whatsoever. He's gone on record multiple times just referring to the entire operating system as Linux. It's Stallman that insists that because these two projects have basically been merged together, you should use both of their names. So GNU slash Linux, or sometimes GNU plus Linux. And this is exactly like you would see with a company merger, where you have something like Square and Enix. At some point they merged together, and then we got Square Enix. Or a more modern example is Activision and Blizzard. They merge together, then we have Activision Blizzard. I guess now we have Microsoft, Activision, Blizzard, King, whatever other companies they own. But keeping it simple, Activision Blizzard. And taking logic from one area and applying it to another seems fair enough. And it makes sense if we're talking about a model Linux distribution. It is the Linux kernel and GNU utils and just that. The problem is that models don't perfectly map to reality. The first problem we have is what about distros that aren't GNU based? Sure, GNU is certainly the most popular suite of software out there, but it's not the only thing that exists. Most notably things like, say, BusyBox. And there are distros that use BusyBox, say, Alpine Linux. And there are plenty of other less popular solutions out there as well. Things like SBase from Suckless. We have Lowbase, which is a Linux port of the OpenBSD software. We have UUtils, which is a basically a Rust rewrite of the core utils. Or we have Ninebase, which is a port of the Plan 9 tools. And if I start listing out all of the C compilers and C libraries, this video is going to go on for an entire hour. But most notably, you have things like Muscle as a C library and Clang as a C compiler. So for something like Alpine Linux, this is objectively not a GNU system. This is a BusyBox system following the same logic from GNU. So would we call it something like BusyBox plus Linux or BusyBox slash Linux? And maybe we have some future distro that uses the Rust utils, UUtils. So would we call that system UUtils plus Linux or UUtils slash Linux? Maybe we do. And if you follow the logic of calling general Linux distros GNU slash Linux, that logic does make sense. But the delineation isn't always so clear. So here's a question and I want you to think about it. How much GNU is needed for a GNU slash Linux system? If I have a normal distro, we can accept this is GNU slash Linux. But if I replace GCC and glibc, is this still GNU slash Linux? What if instead of doing that, I replace all of the core utils, but I keep GCC, glibc, and the rest of the C toolchain? Is this still GNU slash Linux? Surely we can agree that having zero GNU software altogether is a GNU system. So there has to be some point where including GNU software makes it a GNU system. Is GNU like a poison? If there is one bit of GNU software, is the entire system poisoned with GNU? 
or do we need all of the GNU software for it to be a GNU system? Because if we say the latter, this produces a problem. Because there are a lot of people out there who replace the GNU versions of grep and orc because they're not the fastest implementations out there. So are those not GNU systems? Maybe. But maybe instead the names start getting mixed together. So you might have something like uutil slash gnu slash linux. And you can probably see exactly where I'm going here. So while gnu was certainly the focus in the early days, a modern Linux distribution is so much more than just the Linux kernel and GNU. You have things like your display server, your audio server, your desktop environment or window manager. You have things like your GUI frameworks. You have standardized folder structures and file placement. You have your init system, your package managers, your packaging methods. And all of this is crucial to having the Linux operating system. So if Linux isn't an OS without GNU, then Ubuntu isn't an OS without GNU slash systemd slash app slash snap slash Wayland or Xorg slash Pulse Audio or Pipewire slash GNOME slash GTK slash free desktop slash Linux. Or simply put, just Linux. So this is basically the way that I look at it. We have all of these different denominations of types of Linux. We have GNU slash Linux, BusyBox slash Linux, UUtil slash Linux, all of that giant string are listed out and that all fits inside of the inner circle. But generally specifying exactly what you're talking about isn't super useful and you'll spend all your time working out what software gets included in that list. So in the outer circle, this is the Linux operating system. And when we say Linux as an OS, we mean everything inside of that circle. But maybe you disagree, and the reason you use GNU Linux is because you want to show respect to GNU in what they did to help bring Linux forward. If Linux was still just the kernel, no one would really use it. And in those early days, working together with GNU is what brought the operating system forward. But maybe it's something completely different, or maybe you agree with me. In which case, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. So that's going to be it for me. If you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, Scrubs, and like Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.